All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with a Washington football team week three preview against the Buffalo Bills. And you know how it goes with every preview. First, we take a look at the power rankings between both teams, us and our opponent, what we were last week and what we were this week and what they were last week and what they are this week as well. And then we take the big injury report between both teams, who may or may not play, who will or will not play. And then, as usual, we got to look at the history between the teams, who's winning the historical matchup since the Washington football team and the Bills have coincided, who has been winning the most games. And then the main part of the video y'all are here for, the five matchups, the three X factors, and the one score prediction. Y'all already know the process by now, but before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Also, make sure you check out the rest of the channel, all of my videos, the organizing playlist. I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos. Make sure you stay tuned for all of my weekly content, game previews, then a live stream during the game, then a review of the game, then a post-game live stream where y'all call in and give your opinion on what happened in the game live reactions to them all of that type of stuff man just stay tuned for the weekly content that y'all are going to keep getting constant cycle with everything else in between anytime anything important happens i'm reporting that as well but without further ado let's get it All right, so first of all, heading into week two, we were the 20th ranked team after beating the Giants with the 21st. And this is according to Bleacher Report. Not necessarily saying Bleacher Report is better than ESPN, better than NFL Network, or any of these other places. Bleacher Report just had us ranked the highest heading into week one out of any other platform I could find. So I just wanted to stay consistent with theirs throughout the season. So again, we were ranked 20th heading into week two. We went down a spot after beating the Giants. And we're going against the Bills, who were ranked fifth heading into week two. Now they're ranked seventh. So it's the 21st Washington football team power ranked team versus the seventh ranked Bills. So of course we're big underdogs walking into this game. And that's going to be the theme of this entire game. I'll bring that up quite a bit throughout this video. But now we have to talk injuries. Now, as you see on the screen, this Ron Rivera effect is real. Remember, we were one of the most hurt teams in the NFL for like several years running before Rivera got here. And at least one of those years, we were the most hurt team, like the team with the most players on IR. We were literally the most hurt team in the NFL at one point just a few years ago. But now with Ron Rivera changing the practice field, upgrading that, them upgrading FedEx field as well, and then how we practice hard. So when we go into regular season games, everybody's body isn't in shock from just a sudden impact and hitting that they're not used to. We've already been doing all of that hitting in training camp. So when we get to the regular season, this just feels like practice to them physically. And then our training staff is much improved. Ron Rivera brought over his entire training staff from Carolina, scrutinized early by many people, but it looks like it's definitely doing its job right now. So looking at the injury report, we only have two guys on it. And then you have Matt Ioannidis with his knee injury that he, he returned back into the game during the game against the Giants. So even though he didn't participate in Wednesday's practice, he was a limited participant on Thursday, as in today. I still feel like he's going to be good to go because he just played against the Giants. And it's not like his injury got any worse. I think they're just limiting him just to be precautious. I and mean, he's a defensive lineman. How much of the game plan does he need to know? It's not like him missing a lot of practice. He's just not going to be prepared for the Bills. And then Antonio Gibson, our running back, of course, with his shoulder injury, he was limited on Wednesday, but he was a full participant on Thursday like nothing's happened. So he still has that shoulder injury on him, but at the end of the day, he's still a full go. He may not be 100%, but he's good enough to go out there and be used in full capacity. Scott Turner's not limiting the playbook just because of Antonio Gibson's shoulder situation. And then the Buffalo Bills, man. I mean, where do you start? I guess from the top, you have Cole Beasley with a non-injury related rest and he didn't participate in Wednesday's practice and there was just no update on Thursday. I don't know. I mean, and then you have defensive end Jerry Hughes. Same thing. I don't exactly know what's going on there. But defensive tackle star Lutalele with his groin injury did not participate Wednesday. Limited on Thursday. Wide receiver Gabriel Davis 
safety Micah Hyde, cornerback Dane Jackson, who were all limited participants Wednesday and Thursday. And then you have linebacker Tremaine Edmonds. I'm still sad we didn't get him. I really liked him coming out of college. You have defensive end F.A. Obata and cornerback Levi Wallace, who were all full participants all week, Wednesday and Thursday. And of course, we'll look to see what happens tomorrow and Friday's practice. And that's when we'll get the official game status for all of these guys. But as of right now, you can pretty much kind of tell who's going to play, who's not going to play. And it looks like generally a lot of these guys are going to play for them. And of course, like I already said, I think Matt Anitis and Antonio Gibson definitely will play for us. Even though they have a lot of guys on their list, they don't have any serious injuries. So it's quite likely that all of these guys play on Sunday against us. But then again, these NIRs and just did not participate so weird because you also have to add defensive end Mario Addison and wide receiver Emmanuel Saunders. Just no status Wednesday and then didn't participate on Thursday. I don't know what the Bills got going on, but again, nothing looks serious for them. So don't be surprised if all of those guys play against us. Now looking at the history between us and the Bills going all the way back to 1972, we've barely played each other. I mean, since 1972, we've only played each other 15 times and they've won nine, we've won six no ties most recently the bills beat us in 2019 9 to 24 but before that we beat them 35 to 25 in 2015 but i mean things are completely different since 2015 i mean josh allen wasn't their quarterback in 2015 they didn't have tredavious white one of the best corners in the nfl so it's time to go in there and beat them this week so we can attempt to catch back up and tie up this series that we've had going on since 1972 and of course of course, most of their wins have come since we've been a bad team since after that 1991 Super Bowl. But during the 90s and the 80s, that's when we were beating them often. So once we fell off as consistent Super Bowl contenders, that's when we stopped beating the Bills, basically. Since we beat them 1992, the only time we beat them was that 2015 season. Granted, we don't play them often, but still. Now we're on to the five matchups. Number one, the league's best defensive line, question mark, versus a not-so-great Bills O-line. So we need pressure. Josh Allen is easily a top-10 quarterback in the NFL. He's been struggling a little bit this season, but that's not necessarily even on his end. That's because of the defenses he's been going against, and the Steelers' defensive line is great. I feel like our defensive line is supposed to be great, and I feel like that was the main reason the Steelers were able to beat the Bills, even though they were underdogs. We're underdogs as well. We just have to get pressure on Josh Allen. His defensive line is going to play a huge part in this game. Granted, they bounced back against the Giants quietly. It didn't necessarily look like it at times because Daniel Jones was just running whenever he wanted to. But as far as pressure in the passing game, we were able to at least get pressure on Daniel Jones at a very high clip, like an elite clip. And Montez Sweat led the charge with nine pressures, but Jonathan Allen led the team in sacks. And we still need Chase Young to step up, man. Granted, he's getting game plan for. They're doing whatever they can to stop him and let everybody else just do what they got to do. But Chase Young... You're supposed to be one of these guys, one of those guys. Doesn't matter if they game plan for you. You still got to go out there and play better. So this defensive line is going to be huge. If y'all don't step up and play like how y'all did against the Giants, if anything, even better, this game is lost. Josh Allen is the Bills' best player, and we have to disrupt him. He's shown that if you can pressure him often, even though it's hard to bring him down, you can force him to make mistakes. He's a really good quarterback. Again, he's still a top 10 quarterback, but he's definitely one of those guys that will just make a dumb mistake throwing into traffic. He's still a panic passer. Under pressure, he makes a lot of mistakes. So we just need to get there often. And this Bills O-line is nothing scary. I definitely feel like out of these first three games, including the Chargers, the Bills, and the Giants, the Chargers have the best O-line we faced so far this season. So granted, that Chargers O-line did our D-line filthy in that week one game, and then they bounced back against an easier Giants O-line. They need to continue that momentum against this Bills O-line because they're not a top O-line in the NFL at all. And if you can't do it against the Bills, if you can't do it against the Giants, how do you expect to do it against the Chiefs O-line, the Buccaneers O-line, who we've already gotten a taste of in the wildcard game last year? Then number two, this Washington football team O-line versus this Bills D-line that's not as good as the Giants or the Chargers. The Chargers had elite outside pass rushes, especially in Joey Bosa. The strength of the Giants D-line was in their interior, and we were still able to run the ball at will against both of them. So against this Bills defensive line, it's no excuse. They have some good players, but at the end of the day, this O-line 
has their least difficult job you could say so far this season against them so i'm expecting them to definitely have a good game blocking for taylor heineke and also antonio gibson We've been able to run the ball at will so far this season. And I feel like we need to, and I feel like we definitely need to continue that to make the game easier for Taylor Heineke to where he doesn't have to throw us in the winning. Granted, still keep the playbook open. Let him do what he does, making those magical throws, those magical plays is what he does best. And that's what inspires the team to play better and to believe that we can win. But a really consistent and healthy run game is going to be huge for keeping Taylor Heineke consistent and not making sporadic and terrible decisions. Number three, this improving secondary. They, they play, it didn't necessarily look at it at times, but overall, they looked a little better against the Giants than the Chargers. Granted, even though Daniel Jones had a great game and was dotting us up at times, they were kind of there against the Chargers quite a bit. It was just legendary throws from Justin Herbert, great pass and great catch beats great coverage. Whereas the Giants, more guys were just open for no reason with a lot of miscommunication. But when it mattered most, our corners, especially Benjamin St. Juice stepped up big time. And William Jackson got beat a couple of times, but he also had some great plays and coverage as well. But this is a top heavy Bills receiving group. I mean, after Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, even though for some odd reason he was an all pro last year, I don't think he's that good, but he's a decent safety net. Emmanuel Sanders, he's getting up there in age. So there's not really much to talk about as far as this Bills receiving group. As long as you can take Stephon Diggs out of the game and pressure Josh Allen, we should be pretty straight. I mean, that's what the Steelers generally did against the Bills and ended up winning. And I, mean, I want to say Josh Allen is potentially going to play as well as Justin Herbert did against us and better than. Than Daniel Jones but Daniel Jones actually had one of his best games I've ever seen him have against us and granted the defense could have been better but Daniel Jones was actually Danny Dimes against us and there were just some things the defense just couldn't do about so I'm not going to necessarily say Josh Allen's the third great quarterback we've gone against but this is definitely going to be the third great quarterback performance we'll potentially matched up against because again I don't necessarily think of Daniel Jones as a great top 10 quarterback but he definitely played like one against us and again it's not necessarily all in the defense Daniel Jones just played lights out I mean he was throwing dots and and throwing receivers open and in stride unlike he usually does most of the time I don't know what it is against us that we're, we're supposedly this great defense but Daniel Jones plays his best games against us it's still so weird I'm just glad we won that game but at the end of the day Josh Allen's another great quarterback where sometimes we're gonna have great coverage but a good throw and a good catch is going to be good coverage. That's just what happens sometimes. So hopefully we can mitigate that to an extent. Number four, man, these coordinators versus coordinators, man. We cannot be out coached. We need adjustments, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Scott Turner bounced back in a big way against the Giants. That was one of his best play calling games maybe ever in his career i mean that was a beautifully called game taking advantage of mismatches finally getting the ball to your best players terry mclaurin logan thomas getting a lot of targets opening the playbook up for taylor heineke taking the leash off of him the training wheels and allowing him just to do what he does best and it worked out and again with the mismatches having jd mckissick against a slower linebacker in the perfect timing on that play call as well not just the play design but also the perfect timing the perfect execution then ricky seals jones against a dory jackson dory jackson's a really good corner but he's 5'11 versus a 6'5 Ricky Seals Jones in the corner of the end zone. Perfect ball from Taylor Heineke. But again, Scott Turner showed that he could take advantage of matchups against the Giants. And I'm expecting him to continue to do that. So my biggest worry is with Jack Del Rio. We need adjustments. First of all, this blitzing thing, I don't know why we're not doing it more. Kendall Fuller was a better defensive end slash linebacker against the Giants than he was a corner. I mean, like the one time we blitzed him, he got home. We definitely need to blitz more, especially a Kendall Fuller. Benjamin St. Juice, William Jackson, I trust them out in coverage. I don't think we need to blitz Kendall Fuller all game, of course, but I definitely think we should send these linebackers and Kendall Fuller at the quarterback more because, again, Josh Allen's a panic passer. If we can get pressure on him, he's going to make mistakes. And then Jamin Davis, first of all, he needs to be on the field more. That's a big adjustment. He needs to be on the field more than John Bostic. I'm sorry. Pro Football Focus graded him our best defender out of our entire team against the Giants. 
I wouldn't go that far, but he's definitely made huge strides forward. And I'm tired of seeing John Bostic getting double digit more snaps than Jamin Davis. When Jamin Davis is clearly better in coverage, he already looks better in the run game. John Bostic is just good at identifying what the offense is doing. And then he calls the defensive audible, gets everybody where they need to be. Other than that, if we can just get John Bostic to call the play and somehow magically, I know this is impossible, but if he could just run off the field and Jamin Davis come in to actually perform the play, that would be perfect. We need John Bostic's brain and Jamin Davis's body, and you have a top linebacker in the NFL. No joke, for real. But again, Jack Del Rio, you just can't be out coached, man. We need this big time. We need you to step up. Like I keep saying, at the end of the day, guys got to make plays. Cole Holcomb has to catch that interception. Chase Young and Montez Sweat simply have to set the edge against Daniel Jones. But still, Jack DeRio, we need big-time adjustments. I mean, Todd Bowles, granted, he's arguably the best defensive coordinator in the NFL. But taking that safety and moving them to slot corner, and then that very game, that slot corner gets two pick sixes. Can we at least get a little bit of that from Jack DeRio as far as adjustments? And then my last big matchup, man, these receivers versus this elite Bill secondary. This is the best secondary we've gone against this season. Granted, the Giants have a really good secondary. James Bradbury, Adoree Jackson, those safeties, Logan Ryan, Jabril Peppers, those are all really good players. You could probably even say their secondary may be one of the elite ones as well, but they're not the Bills secondary. The Bills arguably have the best secondary in the NFL. So it's going to be up to these receivers to separate to make the job easier for Taylor Heineke. And I'm not worried about it because honestly, nobody can cover Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin got the best of Tredavious White last time Terry McLaurin went against them. And the year that Stephon Gilmore won Defensive Player of the Year as a corner, not even an edge rusher, that was the same year Terry McLaurin was cooking them all game one-on-one. -on -one. It was just bad quarterback play, so Terry McLaurin didn't have the stats to show it. But it goes to show that nobody in the NFL can cover Terry McLaurin one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, what he did against James Bradbury, who's playing like an all-pro and probably will end up being an all-pro corner, at the very least Pro Bowl corner by the end of the season, Terry McLaurin was cooking him as well. So I'm not necessarily worried about Tredavious White as a single person, but this elite secondary does put the pressure on Terry McLaurin, Deami Brown, Adam Humphreys. I wish we had Curtis Samuel and Taylor Heineke and these linebackers as well. But at the same time, the Giants are heavy man. The Bills are heavy zone. So Tredavious White may not even be matched up against Terry McLaurin much of that game. But when he is Terry McLaurin, you need to take advantage of it. So even though the receivers need to separate, the Bills are a zone coverage team. So y'all need to be smart. You need to find the open holes and get your jersey looking at Taylor Heineke to let him know that you're open. Hurry up and throw the ball. You need to have distinctive breaks. When you're running your route and you know you're about to cut inside, make sure you tap your feet in a way that Taylor Heineke can see it so that he can go ahead and throw the ball before you're open so that it gets there as soon as you're open. Little things like that. I'm pretty sure they're practicing that already. That's not just some genius idea I'm coming up with, but it's just definitely something that needs to be talked about. And I hope they take advantage of that. Again, they're a heavy zone defense and they don't have a great pass rush. So I believe Taylor Heineke will have time to dissect that zone coverage, but our receivers need to be smart enough to find the open holes in it. Don't just run your exact route that you're used to running in practice. If there's a corner or a safety there, adjust it a little bit so that Taylor Heineke can get you the ball. Now the three X factors. Number one, third down defense again, man. It improved against the Giants admittingly with them only converting four of 12 but we have to dive in deeper than that first of all the giants only punted three times so yes we got off the field more on third downs in general but it still wasn't enough because even on top of that they didn't need to convert as many third downs because they were moving the ball and having scoring drives where they're converting first and second downs they didn't even need to get into third down situations they were just moving the ball so easily on first and second down what third downs and then even on top of that the third downs they didn't convert even just one play in particular that i'm gonna isolate that one where daniel jones ran for the majority of their yards that they had the game he got it back and put them back in the field goal range so technically it didn't convert that third down but that was a huge mistake on the defense which allowed them to end up getting three points out of it so again you look at we only allow four or 12 third downs to be converted against the giants but again first and second down it was just so easy for them they didn't get into too many third down situations anyway they only punted the ball three times and then technically one of those eight of 12 third downs where we actually stopped them 
one of them you allow daniel jones to get so many yards back he got them back in the field goal range and they got three points out of it so you got to dive further in than just seeing that four of 12 on third downs number two this is probably going to be one of the x factors every week the rookie stepping up is huge granted jamin davis approved a lot like i already spoke about i'm expecting to take another step forward I want to see him play more snaps than John Bostic, or at least just more snaps ratio wise, because John Bostic right now is out snapping him by double digits each game. Also, Samuel Cosme getting better and better. Granted, going from Joey Bosa to even though he's my Georgia Bulldog, Aziz Ajalari, of course he's going to look better. But again, this Bills defensive line is nothing scary. So I'm expecting big things out of Samuel Cosme, and I want to keep seeing him improve as well. Benjamin St. Juice, huge bounce back game. Again, against the Chargers, he was there a lot of the times. It was just a great pass and a great catch versus great coverage. But against the Giants, he was shutting stuff down. He clutched up big time in that last drive we had, where we had to give the ball back to Taylor Heineke with less than two minutes left for him to drive us down for that game-winning field goal by Dustin Hopkins. I mean, Benjamin St. Juice was getting targeted in the clutch, and he came up big. And then De'Ami Brown, I like him as our second option at receiver. I like him getting open quite a bit. That one catch he had early in the game where Taylor Heineke threw it high, and he had to go up and grab it, corral it in. It was an amazing play. And then he had a really clutch slant route catch to move the ball towards the end of the game so he's been huge for us already and i think he's only going to get better because i think we're about to start throwing the deep ball to him more often hopefully we do and i think that's when you're going to see the best diami brown i mean he has the potential to be our version of deshaun jackson we haven't really used him like that that much yet i hope we start i mean that one throw that ryan fitzpatrick underthrew to him that drew that pass interference penalty against the chargers i don't know why we haven't been trying that again because deami brown is faster than most people and his ability to track the ball is amazing sort of like a deshaun jackson and then lastly number three heineke you got to continue this momentum you have to play motivated i mean you got your bud light deal you're coming off of a great clutch win against the giants do not let it get to your head we need you to play motivated like you're still trying to make this team and prove that you should be the franchise quarterback for this team for at least this year and we have a lot to prove this game not just you but just us as a team because again we're huge underdogs going into this game nobody's gonna pick us if you watch espn if you watch nfl network fox any of these places when they pick their games for the week i'm pretty sure we're not going to see a single w on the screen for any of those channels we're huge underdogs walking into this game so all of us have something to prove and i need you to play like it because you're the spirit of the team right now this is our time to change the opinions of the national media and just general fans even just beyond the analysts just general football fans that just love football nobody's expecting us to walk into this bills game and win but again for the reasons i've already stated i feel like we have a great chance of doing that which is why my one score prediction I of us beating them by one point 24 to 23 again i think we're gonna get a lot of pressure on josh allen at least i really really hope we do again i think we will i think our defensive line is getting better and better and i expect them to finally look like what they look like towards the last half of last season against the bills so i'm excited about that again this their defensive line is nothing scary their secondary is elite but they play a lot of zones so as long as the receivers are smart taylor heineke smart and this offensive line holds up and our run game is as potent as it's been these first two weeks i don't see why it wouldn't be for like the bills defensive line will probably be the easier defensive line to run against in comparison to the Chargers and the giants so since we've been doing it against those two matchups why not be able to do it against the bills so i think we match up very well again for the same reasons that the Steelers were able to beat the bills i think we come with those same exact reasons and taylor heineke's playing better than ben roethlisberger right now so i'm excited well i'm mainly looking at jack del rio right now like jack del rio is you taylor heineke is you as well but jack del rio is you a lot of this game is on your shoulders whether we win or not jack del rio i'm looking at you big x factor but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please get in the comments and let me know your predictions for this game and why do you have us winning why or why not and as always man please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything of course and man big shouts out to everybody that supports the channel shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel a special shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose names you see scrolling on the screen right now man i really appreciate y'all i'll catch y'all later i'm out